I mean, there's no Zerglings even on the way for Giga, and his Queens are even being blocked out by his own unit, so it looks like uh, this point in control, I mean, he might not end it here, but this is still just so much Econ damage, the Queens even forced the battle, and uh, losing a lot of health, and if he loses the second Queen, that is pretty much, that. that's it, I mean, oh my goodness, too much yeah. damage being done here. He's pulling the drones down, but it's going to be too little, too late. In control, also cannoning up on the high ground. Great play by him. I want to point out, Giga had plenty of opportunity to micro his queens and also to land a transfuse when his first queen died. He didn't get a chance to do either, and because of that, he is going to clean this up. But if you look at the income tab, it's 24 to 16. Two Stargates are on the way versus zero queens right now. It's just, in control just has to make the units and win this game. It just takes a little while for Stargates to finish. Yeah, so you know, uh, when the Void Rays do come into Giga's base, he is going to be completely uh, surprised. I mean, he's not going to be able to do anything. He doesn't have a queen. Uh, his first queen is still on the way. And right now, Giga, with five Zerglings, or seven rather, that's pretty much all he has left at this point. And I mean, we're just kind of just waiting to see what Giga has planned. He is making a Roche Horn, but again, Void Rays... Uh, you know, they're pretty good against roaches, man. Right, yeah, these Void Rays, are, which I assume he's going to make Void Rays, that would, that would make a lot of sense. Um, yep, he does have the first Void Ray started. They're just going to decimate anything the Zerg can throw at him right now. The Zerg can't even Larva inject because he doesn't have any Queens. He's making two of them, but it, do it doesn't matter at this point. A couple Zerglings are going to poke in at the main. These Zerglings don't have speed because our Zerg hasn't been able to afford that. And he's making a couple Roaches. They're going to try to break the wall. I just, I don't see it happening. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, uh, in control, he's, I mean, he's actually kind of stopped making pros for a while. I figured he'd be way more ahead, but at this point, double right. Void Ray is still going to be insane amount of damage. I mean, Giga scouts the front of the ramp, but still has no idea, um, you know, like if Void Rays are on the way. Six, I mean, Giga, again, what he can't really do anything against this, although he is going for another double Evo Chamber build, which is always very curious. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting choice out of Giga, and I... I hate to say, but I feel like In Control almost stopped trying for a little bit because you saw the Chrono <laughs> Boost on his on his naturals completely. I mean, he's got a hundred Chrono Boost. He definitely should have more probes at this point. And he Chrono Boosted out his Warp Gate, but only built one gateway. So I feel like this point In Control just feels like he's cruising on the victory. But if these Void Rays don't come out, there are Spore Crawlers coming down. The bases are starting to get saturated for the Zerg. Well, I don't think he could make a comeback here. You you never know. Yeah, and uh, you know, Giga, he, I mean, he's prepared for anything. He even has a spine in his base in case, you know, any kind of weird, like, DT might sneak in or something. Because, uh, I mean, at this point, in control, he's just establishing his map presence. He's going to try to surprise with all these Void Rays. He's waiting for six, which is, again, wow. going to just completely destroy everything. It's kind of like those those moments where you see, like, five Banshees fly at you, and you're like, oh, God, I can't, right. can't do anything about this. Exactly. We also see in control just putting pylons down at... I don't, maybe he has a reason for that. They seem seemingly random. The pylon watching the third makes sense, but then the second pylon, I don't really understand down there. So in control, just kind of waiting for these void rays to go in and just do a ton of damage. He's also starting plus one attack. Um, he is, he has macro backup. He's used all his chrono boost now, and he started producing probes again. So he's just, I mean, he's in glorious position. I hate the, I mean, we keep trying to look for something interesting to say here, but it really is just waiting for these Void Rays to get into the base at this point. Yep, so it looks like uh, these band of Void Rays will pretty much just... Oh, and there's one little Phoenix who, you know, is Aww. like their little... It's like the little brother who wants to be included with all of them. Yeah, trying to him, catch you. It's like, along. catch you! I can, I can still fight with you guys! It's like, LOL, you can't shoot the ground. And it looks like at this point, In Control is going to destroy that Roach War. And oh my goodness. Oh my. And, uh, you know, Giga's gonna be like, well, you know, I built roaches, but that's not gonna help. No, Giga does have his, his Hydra Den coming down, but he doesn't have the gas to produce more than four Hydras right now, and he lost. Yeah, Giga pulling to his natural, trying to do anything he can to defend at this point, but his main hatchery is going down. I Hydras know. will be produced, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Yeah, and I mean, look at this point, In Control even has Phoenixes to lift the Hydras. And I mean, he's going to go after everything. The pool is going to go down. Uh, Giga has a couple of spores. He has several spores on the way, as well as queens. But I mean, with these Void Rays doing insane amounts of damage. And it looks like the Hydra Den is also going to go down as well. And uh, Giga, he's intent on playing this all out here. 
Yeah, Giga, I mean, this is one shot against the pro player. He doesn't want to give it up, but at this point, things are getting a little silly. We see four spore crawlers down there, but they're just getting decimated by fully charged void rays. In control, actually using his phoenixes to tank, as weird as that sounds, he's putting them in front of the spore crawlers just so his void rays can live a little bit longer, but at this point, the Hydra's going down, void rays are going to get behind the mineral line, and this spells good game. The Zerk is going for a roach counterattack, but there are already void rays and sentries waiting for it. Oh, so it looks like good game is called by Giga with a little bit of a matter. That's probably what he was doing, spending all of his APM <laughs> typing. And, uh, you know, in control says thank you. And, you know, that's just a great way to symbolize how you can get some good experience. And who knows, maybe Giga uses his motivation to eventually show up even stronger next tournament. Meanwhile, in control does advance 2-0. to zero. And uh, once again, guys, if you're joining us just now, it is PlayM's $400 open tournament. And uh, today's casting is me, I am Frodan, as well as uh, Michael, whose uh, name is Bonker Rooney. And, you know, hey we're guys. just really excited just to cast here today, man. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. I mean, these first games have been a little one-sided, but that's to be expected in the first rounds of a tournament. I mean, this tournament's going to go on for a while, guys. Every round is best of three. So we are going to start seeing winners versus winners here. Taldarim, I believe that signals we are on the round two. Looks like yep. we're actually... Ooh, we're following EG in control. This is pretty cool. We're going to see his next game here. Yeah, so, you know, I want to say... Again, I'm going to look at the brackets. I want to see if I can say that it is the round of 16, but... uh. I'm going to see if Pandane is ready. Uh, looks like he's Sorry, going to it? say wait. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, you know, so... Well, Pandane, I've seen this guy play before. He's not bad. He is a high-level Masters. Um, he's sixth in his division with 1,200 points. He's not bad at all. I used to be on Team NYQ way way back in the day way i mean six eight months ago and there are a bunch of pretty cool guys you know he this is going to be a much stiffer opponent for in control yeah and you know what in control he's i mean he kind of had the luxury of getting away with small little things but now he's gonna have to up it a little bit although it is taldry malta the first uh map of the series and keep in mind again it's best of threes throughout and uh, as we are underway here why don't you introduce our players over here bonk Sure, we have the blue Protoss spawning in the bottom right-hand corner. He is EG in control. You know him, you love him. We just saw a great series out of him. He is playing NYQ Pan Pandium? Pandium? Is that how Pandane. you say it? Pandane. Um, Pandane. I'm, I'm horrible with names, as you guys will learn. Um, he is the Red Zerg. Like I said, high Masters player, good quality player. I've seen him make it pretty far in the play him dailies, but he's got his work cut out for him, especially on a map like Taldarim Altar. You know, you look at this map, and it's really big, so initially you think, oh, this is a great map for Zerg, right? But the problem is, a natural expansion is so easy to take for the Protoss player, so two base timings are so powerful on this map. Not to mention, cannon rushing the natural, going to the low ground or the high ground is, is so difficult to deal with. Yeah, so uh, I, I know exactly what you mean. Looks like uh, In Control is going to set up for that Forge Fast Expand immediately. And meanwhile, it looks like Pandan at the same time. Uh, I mean, when you go up against a player of this caliber, again, you got to stick to what you know. I mean, I kind of think that uh, when you resort to just cheesing someone that's better than you, I mean, yeah, you have a chance of trying to win, but at the same time, it doesn't really, I mean... For me personally, I feel like that's not a good way to try to see how much you can stack against. And uh, you know, in control, yeah, he's gonna just eventually, yeah, play, stick to what he knows, play safe. But ultimately, we've seen that he can do and be ready for any kind of weird situations that may arise. I want to point out a good tip for protest players playing on the ladder. We see in control dropping his forge and immediately. Get, like sending his probe back to gather on this map it's not a bad idea to send two probe scouts out the first goes out at nine and the second goes out at 14 because Ooh. if the zerg is six pulling you you can actually scout it in time if you send two probe scouts even if you scout the zerg last right which in control knowing you know this guy's probably not going to choose me he's not he's not going ahead and doing that but if you want to play safe that's that's not a bad idea on this map i actually see it all the time yeah, and so, you know, that's a great tip, actually, for lots of people who are wondering what to do against those early pools when you go for any kind of early expand. And uh, in control, you know, he's going to scout Zerg, sees... Oh, he's going to go for a pylon block! 
Ooh, but he does lock his probe inside. Looks like, uh, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing. Usually you lock it outside. And oh no, in control cancels all of those. And he sees that, he sees all of the Zerglings, or the two rather. And he realizes that pool was finished, so he's going to uh, cancel that uh, cannon rush over there. But overall, he did waste 75 minerals doing that. Yeah, I'm a little surprised in control even tried that. It's a cute maneuver, but it can be risky, especially when the Zerg spawning pools. And in control should have seen this hatchery and known the time of that spawning pool. I mean, no real harm done, except for the fact that in control's nexus is this much later. His nexus could be even closer to being done right now if he hadn't done that first. In control also leads his two Zerglings back to a death by cannon, which is a good play by him. But all in all, he made a bit of a mistake there. Right, so, uh, you know... I, some people are wondering, you know, what exactly can you do in those situations as Zerg, but you just have to make sure to be prepared for those situations. Always have, you know, kind of like a, a scout to make sure to catch what a probe's doing. Because, you know, again, those things are sneaky, man, and those things can cost right. you easy games. And, you know, in controls shown in the past in other tournaments like MLG that he's unafraid to take those easy wins if you're not careful. Oh, definitely. I would say if a Zerg gets caught in that position and your natural is about to come up, the first thing you need to do is take a drone and make a spine crawler there. That's probably the best way to deal with it. I mean, making a million lings can be okay, but if they're on the wrong side of the wall, and they're not really going to help that much. Yeah, so yeah. that's just a you know a little tip for our, for our friendly Zergs out there. Yeah, you see, for our friendly Zergs. <laughs> I know I'm a Protoss player, so I hate to give them any more advantage, <laughs> but... You know, I'll try to What are nice you doing, here. man? I know, I know. A ladder's going to get so much harder after this cast. Oh, well, well, especially against you specifically. That's always kind of like the, the one thing. Like, I was playing uh, one time, like a, like a team game, and I was telling people what I usually do in team games, and then I went to go play a team game, so I was like, yeah, I heard you say what you do in team games, and, yeah. uh, you know, I just want to say thanks for the information. I'm like, oh, crap, so. Yeah, that <laughs> happened to me. Too, actually, and real quick, we do see the red Zerg taking his third hatchery. Great choice. He knows yeah, it's safe to, to drone up. He's also sending a Lings just, I don't know, just Helter Skelter around the map. They're looking for any sorts of a fun proxies. They're going to try to look. They're going to try to poke in, count the sentries, see if Warp Gate's up. Doesn't give him much information, but every little bit counts. Also, um, Pandian has this Overlord in place to fly into the main soon, which is also very high level play. Yeah, so it looks like, uh, I mean, the Overlord is going to fly, and he won't see much. In Control is going for a Stargate, which his Dirkling just barely missed. Voidray is on the way to see if he can go attack that third. But keep in mind, this is the Blizzard Ladder, uh, Taldry Maltar. So the rocks right. are blocking the third. So that's why Zerg went for that northern third expansion, or second expansion, right. rather. And uh, you know what? In Control is going to be able to deal with that a little bit. I mean, it's kind of changes things up, but for the most part, I mean, Zerg's been pretty good about his economy. Look at this, 47 drones already. And, wow. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of macro going on. Yeah, the, the point you make about that Stargate positioning is actually so true, because it's just far enough to where those Zerglings can't see it at the ramp, but this Overlord that comes in at the main can't see it either. So our, our Zerg has no idea this is happening, but if you look... The, in Control's base is surrounded mm -hmm. by an Overlord, and then a Zergling, and then another Overlord. So anywhere this Void Ray flies out, he should be able to catch it. Yeah, you know, the Void Rays are revealed. And another thing that kind of tips Zerg off uh, is that Pandian also saw nothing in the main. And normally, if you know, you're going to do any kind of transition of like a blink timing or some kind of plus one warp gate timing, you have a lot of gateways scattered around your main base. So when he sees nothing, he can immediately think, well, you know, you might be teching. So, of course, the sport callers are already up. Meanwhile, Void Ray is hunting down Zerglings and uh, Overlord for bounty. And in control, he's on the prowl. Right, you are you are very correct about that. That is a great signal to the Zerg. And these, these Void Rays are, are hunting for Zerglings, but if that's all they can catch, they're going to be sorely disappointed. I want to point out, Pandian's map presence is amazing. Yeah. He has Zerglings. Wow, he has this Overlord in the top right. He has Zerglings at all the expected expansion. He... You know, he's looking really strong, although these Zerglings running into a bunch of Void Rays wasn't exactly the best move. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Those Zerglings, uh, they can get away pretty fast. And it looks like they're going to see if they can poke the front to see what's going on. A Fester Infestation Pit is on the way, and actually, that's actually very dangerous for In Control. He needs to get sight of that as soon as possible because, again, uh, those Infestors could end the harass very, very easily. And, uh, you know... Uh, in control is transitioning to a lot of gateways though as well as a twilight council so you know he's not gonna just try to see he's gonna try to do a really strong follow-up here with perhaps a lot of gateway units right at this point in controls void ray 
it, the damage was negligible, so he has to transition into something to base. Because yeah. he realizes, I can't expand, all these Zerglings are on the map, and there's very little I can do about them. Meanwhile, our Zerg is free to do whatever he wants, and he's actually going for... He's getting Pathogen Gland and plus one melee attack, so he's going for like an Infestor Ling timing. Oh, he actually gets a ton of Zerglings trapped Ooh. by four force fields. It's devastating. Yeah.